Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Red Dusk. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lovers. We got a couple of events to read about, but Fuse Downfall. After much effort, Fuse seemed poised to secure re-election as General Secretary, having gained the support of the majority of the Politburo. However, at the 12th plenum of the 8th Central Committee, the Central Committee rejected the Politburo's decision to nominate Fuse. What is considered a very, very rare occurrence. Another plenary session was urgently convened and referred to as a 12B plenum. A new candidate, Nong Duk Man, currently serving as the chairman of the National Congress, was introduced to be elected as general secretary in the lead-up to the upcoming party congress. Huh. And the 9th National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam. In the past few days, the entire country has been eagerly anticipating the most significant event in Vietnam, the 9th Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam. This congress will shape the country's destiny for the next five years. Finally this morning, the Congress commenced in Hanoi with 1,168 official delegates representing almost 2.5 million party members from across the nation. Hundreds of domestic and foreign journalists gathered in the capital hoping to receive the latest and most important updates. Alongside them, millions of Vietnamese citizens tuned into the radios or TVs, eagerly awaiting the latest news about the Congress. Taking place 15 years after the historic 6th National Congress and the initiation of the Doi Moi economic reform, the Congress occurs in a global context marked by political instability following the collapse of the socialist bloc in Eastern Europe and the significant weakening of the Soviet Union. Therefore, the Congress is expected to propose more drastic reform measures to pull the country to completely out of the mire of war and embargo. Let us begin. As of course we are here, and uh, well, we're still trying to hop out in the Congo. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at all the stuff we got now. General Secretary... Uh, Nong Duk Man. Well, the conclusion of the Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam is elected as a new General Secretary, who was Nong Duk Man. The latter boasts great popularity, whether by rumor or not, because there's no speculation that he's one of Ho Chi Minh's sons, Nong Duk. Respond to this, every Vietnamese is son of Uncle Ho. The current General Secretary will have to guide a country through the consequences of past reforms and the new ones, which we're going to address this year, and her failure in the past. After Gloria's victory in 1975, Vietnam faced numerous challenges stemming from a three-decade-long war. <coughs> Transitioning from a primarily agrarian economy, the country embarked on its path towards socialism bypassing the capitalist stage. During this period, the Communist Party of Vietnam made its mistakes, including serious ones, in its leadership. These errors were driven by dogmatism, subjectivity, and deviation from objective principles. In the process of social construction and transformation, we failed to fully grasp the instructions provided by Marx and Engels. Specifically, we do not fully comprehend this essence of the argument that communists can summarize their theory in this single phrase, the abolition of the private ownership regime. Instead, we mistakenly equated the eradication of the private ownership regime with the elimination of private forms of ownership and private ownership of property. Uh, the truth is that communism does not abolish individuals' ownership of social products, rather, it eliminates the possibility of using such ownership to enslave others. The essence of communism lies in eradicating the private ownership regime that facilitates the exploitation of humans by humans, and the use of ownership to subjugate others, rather than eradicating the existence of private forms of ownership. <clears throat> Unfortunately, due to this misunderstanding, we attempted to eliminate forms of ownership beyond state control ownership, uh, state ownership and collective ownership. This approach posed significant challenges and resulted in severe economic and social crises in the 70s and 80s. Times can change. The historic Congress. In the circumstances, <clears throat> the CPV together with their people gradually overcome the challenges. The Sixth Party Congress in December 1986 marked a turning point in our history with the decision to comprehensively renovate our country. From thought to personal organization, from leadership approach to working style, from economy, politics, to culture, etc. To implement the Doi Moi renovation, and especially to renovate our thought in order to eliminate the misunderstanding, and one certain awareness of Marxism and Leninism out of the way toward socialism. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Absolutely. A changing party rules? As many progress, some delegates publicly demanded that the Congress should be given the authority to elect the General Secretary and the head of the Central Committee for inspection. This was supported by former Prime Minister Volk van Kiet. He has continuously promoted the democratization process within the party, notably by reinforcing the importance of the party congress by giving its delegates the power to decide on all issues raised in the congress, including the election of the party central committee. Approved. Yeah, who's down here? You're actually definitely learning a lot, which is great. Uh, you can be charismatic too, especially for where we're at. The question of the advisory council to the central committee. In 1986, the advisory council to the central committee of the Communist Party of Vietnam was established in the early stages of Vietnam's economic and social reforms. The Council's primary role is to advise the party on policies and practices, particularly in ensuring that the new generation of leaders stay true to the principles of Marxism and Leninism. While the leaders of the Central Committee advisors are no longer directly involved in governing and directing state affairs, they still have positions within the Politburo and possess significant influence on Vietnam's collective leadership. This dynamic has unintentionally created tensions between the new and old generations of leaders, causing delays in certain reforms. Consequently, there have been calls for some party members to abolish the advisory council. On the other hand, 
Many party members support the advisory council due to concerns with the rising tide of revisionism, following the collapse of the communist bloc in Eastern Europe. The fear of deviating from Marxist-Leninist principles is prevalent, and there is uncertainty regarding the possibility of a similar upheaval to the August coup in the Soviet Union taking place in Vietnam. Abolish it. As well as the Political Bureau Standing Committee, reestablish the Secretariat. Keep the advisory council, but limit their influence. I don't want to lose any more stability. Hmm. Tensions. Causing delays in reforms. You get more reformed communism. Well, we're not really communist communists. We're more reformed communists. But I don't want to lose any more stability. Limit their influence. Hmm. I'm not sure what we do with the political power, though. You know, we're going to hurt ourselves. Abolish it. Screw it. Whatever. End of the Congress. Today in Hanoi, the National National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam has come to an end. During the Congress, many notable plans were set, such as strategic planning the five-year plan from 2001 to 2005, the party rectification project, the resolution modernizing the army. Up to the moment, the Gap reported report to the entire party, and that army that the Ninth National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam has been very successful, which is great. Mm, you know what? I want you here. Um, the Congress is warmly welcomed and sincerely thanked all levels of party committees, party organizations, revolutionary veteran comrades, National Assembly deputies, fatherland front, and socio-political organizations, and mass organizations, the people, all cadres, party members, dignitaries, and intellectuals. The great success of the Ninth National Congress of the Party will strongly encourage the entire party, people, and army to continue to overcome all difficulties and challenges, taking advantage of opportunities and advantages, strives to soon turn a country into a developed, high-income, socialist-oriented economy and country, I suggest, immediately after the Congress, all party committees and organizations should focus on doing a good job of disseminating and propagating extensively throughout the party. People and army about the results of the Congress, studying and thoroughly grasping the resolution and documents of the Congress, expeditiously develop and implement programs and action plans, launch an extensive patriotic emulation movement, a spirit of innovation and creativity, overcome all difficulties and challenges to soon bring the resolution to the Congress into action, turn the decisions of the Congress into vivid reality. The Congress calls on the Tower already entire party, people, and army, and compatriots at home and abroad to bring into the full play the patriotism, the will to suffer lines, the strength of the great national unity to try to emulate the successfully implement the resolution of the Congress with a spirit that must, that next year must be better than the previous year. We're proudly and deeply believe in the strength, bravery, and wisdom and will of the entire party, our nation, and the bright future of our, con and our country. I keep saying economy. A great success for our nation. First plenum. Our Congress has ended smoothly as expected, but the real game has only begun. The first plenum is the moment where the political bureau will elect the position of General Secretary, the most powerful position de facto, and will be the full one to steer the country for the next five years. Very well. Le Cafu's resignation. Dear comrades, during the 8th Party Congress, five years ago, I was trusted and elected to the post of General Secretary by you, and it's a great honor, but also a big responsibility for me. As my term has come to an end, I'd like to announce that I will be retiring after this term. In the past five years, our country has experienced tremendous development thanks to the merits of the party in particular and and people of the country in general, as a part of the great achievement. I am delighted, however, besides that, there are also many limitations, especially corruption is rampant in the government. The party is fully aware of this problem. Many senior leaders have been th brought to trial, but there are still many guys who are greedy for power and money. I firmly believe that the next generation of leaders will continue to eradicate the corrupt faction from the party and government. I put all my faith in my comrades, the working people of the whole country, that our country will be richer, stronger, and more developed. Long live the glorious Communist Party of Vietnam. Thank you for everything, comrade. And so comments include, uh, uh, include, can you play as Estonian or Latvian in this mod? I don't think they have a unique focus tree. As we have a new general secretary, so. Lee Ka Fuse, unexpected decision to resign as general secretary has reverberated throughout the nation, leaving many in shock as they anticipated his continuation in the role for the new term. Speculation and discussions about his potential successor has been rampant on social media. Platforms in recent days with various opinions circulating, however, the final outcome caught everyone's decision, or everyone's opinion, by surprise. And a monumental announcement this morning. The political bureau revealed their decision to appoint Nok Duk Mam, former president of Vietnam, as the new general secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam. This historic appointment marks the first time an individual from an ethnic minority has assumed such a high position in the country. The news has been met with widespread joy as it symbolizes the country's commitment to equality and among ethnic groups. Nevertheless, some have expressed reservations and questioned his capabilities. Let's see what he can do. Surprising news emerged from the National National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam. Lee Ka Fu has tendered his resignation. In response, the political bureau has conducted a vote appointing Nong Duc Man, who belongs to an ethnic minority, as a new general secretary. In his inaugural speech, the newly appointed general secretary has made several promises. He pledged to continue the country's development trajectory, emphasizing the acceleration of the industrialization process, 
Additionally, express a strong commitment to addressing social, critical social issues such as corruption and poverty. Nong Duk Man's appointment and his promises have stirred considerable interest and speculation about the future direction of Vietnam under his leadership. General Secretary's speech, comrades. The platform is, is the battle flag of the party. Implementing the platform of 1930, the party uh, led our people to wage a long and arduous revolutionary struggle, overcome numerous difficulties and challenges, and achieve great victories. The August Revolution in 1945 of August. We broke the colonial and feudal rule, established a democratic republic of Vietnam, brought our nation to the era of independence and freedom. The victories of resistance wars against aggression, culminating in the Dien Bien Phu victory in 1954, the Spring General Offensive and Uprising in 1975, a national liberation, national reunification, and national defense, and fulfilling international obligations. Under the ban of the 1991 platform, the party has led our people firmly to overcome many turbulences and dangerous challenges, to win many victories in the process of doi moi, industrialization, and modernization, bringing the country to continually, gradually transition to socialism with newer perceptions and thoughts that are correct and consistent with the reality of Vietnam. Today, our country is translating to socialism in international context, that, which has undergone many great and profound changes with the salient feature of the era, the country's fierce competition for national interests. The struggle of the people of different countries for peace, national independence, democracy, and social progress, so had many difficulties and challenges, while we'll new progress. The international context and the reality of our country's revolution require our party to maintain its orientation, and at the same time supplement and develop the 1991 platform to suit the development requirements of the country in the new period. Socialism is an aspiration of our people. The right choice of the Communist Party of Vietnam and President Ho Chi Minh. A social society uh, that our people build is a society of wealthy people, strong people, country, democracy, justice, and civilization. Owned by the people having a highly developed economy based on mo modern productive forces and public ownership of the main means of production. Their overall goal at the end of the transition period in a country is to complete the construction of the economic foundation of socialism with the appropriate political, ideological, and cultural superstructure creating the foundation for a country to become an increasingly prosperous socialist country. From now on until the middle of the 21st century, our entire party and people must strive to build our country into a modern, industrialized, socialist-oriented country. To successfully implement the above mentioned uh, policies and objectives, it's necessary to thoroughly grasp and effectively implement the following basic directions. Accelerating the industrialization and modernization of the country in association with the development of the knowledge economy and develop a socialist-oriented market economy. We must strive to achieve the industrialization of the country by 2020 at all costs. Accelerate it. Focus on light industry and agriculture first. Oh boy. Uh, no time to waste. More open. Open more industrial zones. Labor is glorious versus steady forward. Agriculture is key to industrialization. <clears throat> Focus on light industries first. We're going to accelerate it. This probably sounds like a bad idea, in all honesty. We got no time to waste. Safe visit to Cambodia. Remove USSR line nation. Uh, Chai Sim is old, and Cambodia is preparing to welcome a new generation of leaders who are younger, more open minded, and more reform oriented. And one of the brightest candidates is none other than Comrade Sun Hen, Hun Sen himself. During the upcoming president's visit to Cambodia, we'll take the opportunity to support Hun Sen and encourage reformers seeking within the Cambodian People's Party. The art of diplomacy. Diplomacy has always been good for every country. Most of the time, and with Vietnam, it will be the same. We've already had proof more than once of the capabilities of Vietnamese diplomats. The first one we signed the exchange agreement with the states, and the second less than a few weeks ago in Cambodia. Now, therefore, we have a fundamental moment to arrive in the history of our country. The choice to attach ourselves with maximum dedication to the socialist ideals of our fathers, or to open up to the capitalist world. State visit to Cambodia. Uh, during the state visit to Cambodia, our state delegation was received by Prime Minister Hun Sen. The visit to Vietnam aims to strengthen and enhance the relationship and cooperation with being the two of the brotherly nations, while also reaffirming the joint efforts in the Viet Tian Treaty and the eradication of remaining Khmer Rouge forces. Additionally, Prime Minister Hun Sen highly appreciated the outcomes of the 9th National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam, affirming that Vietnam's renewal policies is correct and served as both an example and a valuable lesson for Cambodia. In conclusion, the success the visit was a great success, contributing to the strengthening and nurturing of ever developing friendship for the benefits of the peoples of both countries. Interesting. Amend the 1992 Constitution. Socialist rule of law state. Draft new Constitution. Oh, we get some reform communism. We get more here. Um. Okay, so there's nothing there for that one. I kind of want to see what this one is. I, I, I'm pulling towards much more reform communism in this campaign. Not saying that old communism is bad, but I want this one. Amendment to the Labor Code. 
A fundamental thing of every social state is a strict labor code that not only helps productivity of our industries, but is far and fair and normal for our workers, who under no circumstances should work longer hours than normal or human capacity. The amendment to the labor code will give many more rights to workers and will protect them from the majority of accidents that can occur in the workplace, such as injuries. May t Day 2001 Greetings, dear comrades. Today is, is worker celebration and not for the bureaucrats. While the grotesque Vietnamese bureaucrats pretend to arrange May Day for the workers as if they were representing workers' interests. There are no marches or rallies or no demonstrations, but only small in indoor May Day ceremonies with a few workers' representatives and restrained speeches made by careerist unionists. Of course, these speeches are to support the age-old Stalinist regimes to swear uh, to be completely loyal to the ruling elite and divert the workers' attention from the real situation they are facing. At the 9th Congress, the bureaucrats declared that they would keep reforming, and the workers' situation keeps getting worse, though. But the more the workers have to suffer, the more the consciousness grows. The recent uh, series of wildcat strikes in the south of Vietnam are an indication of this. However, the workers in Vietnam will only be able to overthrow the Stalinist regime when they can link the struggle to the struggle of the workers in Indonesia, Philippines, China, and elsewhere on the globe. Once the workers unite in one struggle, there will be no hope for the capitalists or the bureaucrats. Yours in solidarity. And since we've got enough here, we we'll do this. Boop. Stick yourself in. Do we have anything else we can throw here? Do we have any motorized artillery companies? No, we don't. That sucks. But that's right. We need way more already. Which is totally normal. Civil War in South Africa, very nice. Who could have seen that one coming? What is this? Oh. Well, we definitely don't, would not support the apartheid regime. Hull two divisions. Focus on socialist countries. This is to China. <clears throat> Look to the capitalist world. Visit Japan. Hmm. Neutral is the best answer. Oh. Focus on socialist countries, capitalist countries. But please, both focuses. So, what we do? Complete both. Do we get both? I've never had this happen before. Um, you know what? Let's say if we can do both, kind of like that. Oh, we can do both. Okay, I'm good with that. Approach A S E A on countries. The best way to approach foreign markets is to start directly in our home, Asia. In fact, one of the strongest economic alliances in all of Asia is A C E N. In addition to being close to us, and economically strong, this alliance is looking for members or contacts with whom to establish stable commercial relationships, and this is exactly what we need. Therefore, as the first move over opening to the market, it's precisely to enter into a relationship with this economic alliance and perhaps become part of it definitely with a membership. Hey, another tank, great. How's it going down here? Very nice so far, very nice. Nepalese Royal Massacre, how tragic. Draft new constitution. Okay, slightly better consumer goods and whatnot there. Oh, there goes a political power. Whoopsie. Visit Japan. More political power. Tree, trip. 
Uh, path to industrialization. Amendment to the labor code. <coughs> path is an industrialization after months of preparation. The town's finally come to take this big step forward and industrialize the nation on a grand scale. Well, yes, it's known that Vietnam, since it was a simple colony, has always supported itself thanks to agriculture, and the French colonial government never wanted to industrialize this land. Even if, as said before, agriculture is excellent, a state, especially if it is a social state, needs factors and a base, stable basic industry to live in luxury. The only decision to be made now is to determine which plan to undertake, whether the massive industrialization or a more steady one. No time to waste. Waiting is completely futile. Our motherland has been waiting for years for factories and mechanization, industries and so on to arrive, but this never happened. If we continue with, he goes, he who goes slowly goes safe and goes far. And we will move on, but we'll never reach our destination, therefore, we don't have a single second to waste. The industrialization of Vietnam will happen this year, and at the end of it, our motherland should be like the rest of the industrialized Asian countries. Oh god. We'll immediately begin a policy of massive industrialization throughout the country, focusing more heavily on heavy industries, and we'll sideline our temporary agriculture to focus our efforts on the process of industrialization. No time to waste. That's right. Labor is glorious. Uh, uh, yeah. There's no greater satisfaction than that of the sweating in the factories and industries of the motherland? Absolutely not. The glory of a citizen, worker, or politician is that of working. Working without stopping, working even while bleeding, working even if your strength abandons you, working, working, working. Here's the glory of the Vietnamese citizen. Think of the factory and the workers, men who work in fiery cauldrons to forge metals with which other men and other factories use to create machines to make us move, rifles which give our soldiers for the defense of the country. And why do these men work so tirelessly in these factories? To get into the country's future, obviously. Right. Two thousand is computing. Better be nice. Radio, perhaps? Open more industrial zones. As I already said before, the government is doing everything possible and coordinating perfectly to guarantee the greatest number of industries for the population in the shortest possible time. Currently, in the process of massive industrialization, the government has decided to open a large number of industrial zones all over the country to offer the possibility of work to construction workers for the construction of the aforementioned industries and a stable place of work for the workers that will offer their finished labor in the factory once the constructions are complete. We could use more, you know, more factories more help still. Um, we're gonna be a fleet and being. <laughs> sure. Can I actually win here? No. I think you should probably help out here. Renewing the Treaty of Friendship, a move that must be implemented to continue to guarantee Vietnam the possibility of stable relations between all the major socialist countries, including the leader of the Soviet Union, is to oh well, look at that, that's terrible. Um, is to renew the Treaty of Friendship between the two nations. This move will uh, make the other side understand that a country's only good intentions for socialism and for the network of our friendly relationships. Message to China. The biggest ally of communist country in Asia, especially Indochina, is undoubtedly the PRC. In fact, this giant is in addition to being a uh, bastion for socialist ideology, has also donated weapons and military supplies during the Vietnam War, supporting us. Now, even in a mild way, the, in the face of what China has done for us, 
We will thank them with a declaration of friendship and letter of thanks from our general secretary. Renew the Vietnam Soviet Treaty of Friendship. <clears throat> 1978, faced with uh, the aggression of the Beijing government and the harassment of the Khmer Rouge on the southwestern border of Vietnam and the Soviet Union, I'll signed a friendship treaty, marking an important milestone in the Viet Soviet relationship. At the same time, Vietnam also strengthened its position alongside the Soviet Union in the Sino Soviet split. The time has passed, and Vietnam's foreign policies have undergone many changes. It still cannot take this, shake the spirit of solidarity and friendship between the two countries. The expansion of friendship treaty. Expected that cooperation, econ economics, technology, and defense will continue. Additionally, educational cooperation is noteworthy as the Soviet Union has a good expanding scholarships for Vietnamese students studying there, especially in the field of science and technology, providing valuable support for Vietnam and building a skilled labor force and innovation to advance towards socialism. Where comradeship lasts forever. Visit Japan. Unlike any other state, the lovely land of the rising sun is always needing and ready to establish any kind of relationship with the majority of the nations in Asia and beyond, absolutely regardless of the ideologies that these ones profess. The visit to Japan made by our General Secretary is the task of establishing friendly relations uh, with Vietnam and also trying to lay the foundations to a possible trade agreement and expand our good intentions, even though it always take years before trying to actually sign an agreement. Question of Kham Ranh Naval Base In 1978, the Soviet government officially signed an agreement with Vietnam to lease Kham Ranh Port for a period of 25 years. Now the agreement is about to expire. We can propose to extend the contract with the Soviet Union to strengthen a cooperation with them by receiving a considerable amount of payment in return or take over Kamran base or solids and use it for a Vietnamese Navy. Kamran. Nope. It's alright. It's all good. Don't worry about it. I guess at this point we're just here to defend. And that's fine with me, whatever. And I strapped guys. Flight to Pyongyang. Our General Secretary, Nong Dok Dung Mang, had to renew friendly relations with North Korea and the leader of Kim Jong il, decided to personally go to Pyongyang to meet him. The action will make the North Koreans understand our country's good intentions to continue maintaining relations with them, and the meeting of our two leaders will only continue to stimu stimulate in Asian and non-Asian socialist countries that Vietnam really wants to establish friendly relations with the latter, and not have pure personal business like the majority of states. Zhang Zemin's visit. After the Ninth Party Congress, uh, the General Secretary and President of China, Zhang Zemin, visited Vietnam to further discuss the bilateral relationship between the two countries and issue mutual cooperation. Interesting. Joint statement. A uh, joint statement on the comprehensive cooperation in the new century between the Socialist Republic of Vietnam and the People's Republic of China. The Socialist Republic of Vietnam and the People's Republic of China are two socialist neighboring countries with long-standing traditional friendly relations. Over the past 50 years since the establishment of diplomatic relations, the Vietnam-China relationship has continually strengthened and developed. Since the normalization of the bilateral relations in 1901, based on the principles recorded in the Joint Communiques of 1981, 92, 94, 95, and the Joint Statement of 99 issued during the high-level meetings between the leaders of the two countries, the traditional friendship, mutual trust, equality, and mutual benefit uh, between the two countries has rapidly developed in all areas, with exchanges between sectors and levels occurring frequently. Both sides reaffirm the commitment to continue based on the principles and purposes of the United Nations Charter, the Five Principles of Peaceful Coexistence, and the recognition of international relations promoting the comprehensive development of relations between the two countries. The Communist Party of Vietnam and the Communist Party of China continue to develop their friendly cooperation relationship based on the principles of independence, autonomy, and complete equality, mutual respect, and non-interference in each other's uh, internal affairs. Great. Negotiating with the EU. Now the time is coming to present ourselves in the presence of one of the greatest economic beasts of the free market, namely the European Union. For many years, the EU has established to the best of its ability and succeeded in a dense, perennial, stable market network, which is always trying to be in contact with as many countries as possible, European or not, to try to establish a sort of economic hegemony. Currently, given the turn our politics has taken, we have an opportunity to present ourselves to this alliance and try to establish relations even with them in Europe. Vietnam will open the door to the free market in one way or another. Hey, great job, guys. Flight to Pyongyang. Yesterday, a plane carrying General Secretary Nong Dok Man landed at Suzhen International Airport, uh, Pyongyang, starting an official visit to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. During the visit, either party helps improve relations and strengthen cooperation in many aspects. 
many issues were discussed, but one that received special attention was military cooperation. Let's see where this goes. Ah, the Americans are attacking us. North Korea proposal. The political and economic crisis in Eastern Europe uh, in the 90s severely affected the North Korean economy. After the August coup, trade between the Soviet Union and North Korea stalled, and the Soviet government demanded payment from North Korea for the past and present aid, money that North Korea cannot pay. As a result, a food crisis occurred and there was a risk of potential famine. Fortunately, thanks to the food aid from China, the scourge was averted. In 1993, trade with the Soviet Union resumed and Soviet aid began to flow into North Korea. However, this crisis still haunts the North Korean leadership during this visit. The North Korean side offered to continue using weapons to buy food from us. A similar agreement happened in 96 when the North Koreans used several missiles and two Yugo class submarines to pay for rice purchases from Vietnam. Sure. Diplomo diplomacy mission in South Korea. Other visits to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, many opinions within the party suggested a high level state visit to the Republic of Korea is necessary to take balanced relations between the two nations. <clears throat> you know what? We'll do it anyways. <clears throat> well, we obviously do prefer the North Koreans. Let's do this anyways. Two thousand two elections. Elections have arrived, and with them, the need to elect a new head of state, and to, will guide Vietnam in its future, and to the passage of all the reforms carried out by the general secretary. The current state of our country allows us to say with absolute certainty that this event will proceed smoothly and not with too many hiccups or accidents. If we want to make a general overview of the elective tram, it can be said that there is no absolute certainty of a new general secretary, because in any case, we must not exclude the possible re-election of Nong Duc Mam. These elections are fundamental for Vietnam, since the one who will be elected will have the task of guiding the country in a transition to the reforms carried out previously from the old administration. Absolutely. Looks like we're actually doing okay here, finally. Nice. Good. What would they do without us, you know? Still building. Still out of a ton of artillery and anti-air, but that's pretty normal. I guess if you really want to help support the attack, it's fine. Become more of an organizer. As long as you defeat, up oh, you got rid of one division, great. Oh, they can actually pass, pass with us, oh, that's not ideal. Okay, more organization for us is fantastic. Oh, yeah, did you push in at all? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't think attacking is a really good idea, but... Especially when you're forcing the attack, that's probably a really bad idea. Euro, Lithuania... <clears throat> National Assembly's first session. Seventh five-year plan. The seventh five-year plan demonstrates the development of viewpoints and strategic goals for the next ten years. The basic content of which is bringing your country out of underdevelopment, significantly improving the material, cultural, and spiritual life of the people, creating a foundation for a country to basically become a modern industrialized country by 2020, strengthening human resources, scientific and technological capacity, infrastructure, economic potential, national defense and security, forming the basis of a socialist-oriented market economic institution, and enhancing your country's position in the international arena. And building a social society, liberating the nation towards colonial from colonial and <clears throat> feudal oppression and injustice, and building socialism is that national independence must be associated with socialism. Is Uncle Ho's greatest ambition. He thought his thoughts on building, developing, or developed socialism, developed society, and gradually realized the goal of Vietnam with wealthy people, strong country, democratic, fair, and civilized society, where everyone can have a prosperous, free, happy life, and conditions for comprehensive development of Vietnam have a profound theoretical and practical significance. 2002 Legislative Censorship. The victorious August Revolution in 1945 uh, overthrew the exploitative yoke of the colonial imperialists in the backwards field of monarchy, establishing the Democratic Republic of Vietnam for the first time in history. Um, the Vietnamese people enjoy one of the most basic democratic rights, the right to vote. Uh, the first general election took place in 90, 1946 as an eloquent demonstration of the Republican democracy and the people's first fierce aspirations for freedom. And now, the elections of the deputies and the 11th National Assembly and all level people's councils to the 2002 to the 2007 10 years officially taking place and once again the people will elect those who will lead the country in the next five years. The streets are filled with posters, public loudspeakers, and constantly encouraging people to vote. 
Mobile ballot boxes lying on bicycle saddles occasionally appear on the streets, and polling stations are crowded. The main campaign issue is the fight against corruption at all levels of society, as increasingly widespread corruption and wealth of senior officials have become a major cause of dissatisfaction for voters. The media were full of revelations um, as to links between high-level police officers and party officials and well-known organized crime fighters. In addition, three Communist Party officials were disqualified from, from the first final list of candidates, one of them being linked to a major underworld figure who is in jail or on murder charges. During the electoral campaign, party and state leaders vowed to do their utmost to ensure that the 11th National Assembly conducted its business efficiently, and the Communist Party leader described corruption as the number one poll issue. The elections were seen significant because for the first time, at least at the quarter of the deputies will be full-time, and the candidates contesting seats were younger with higher academic qualifications than in previous elections. And also for the first time, the candidates were required to disclose their assets in an effort to combat corruption. Interesting. The election results. After many days of waiting, the National Electoral Council and local election commission units have announced that this candidates elected to the People's Council and the 11th National Assembly. Voter turnout was reported to be 99%. The overall result is A. The Communist Party still holds a majority of the National Assembly seats, but the number of independent candidates elected has increased. B. The Communist Party still holds a majority of the National Assembly seats, while the number of elected independents decreased. Um, I mean, we're not really trying to be liberals here. They're yellow. Um, I mean, we go back to the guides. You get this guy. You have to elect a prime minister during the first session to have the National Assembly of Vietnam and defeat in the Indochina War. Which I don't want to defeat, so. Fu Trong? I guess we have Fu Trong. I don't want to really lose anything. Um, so. I plan on winning. But we'll see. Um, let's go with that one. We play, play both sides, so we always come out on top. There we go. That's what I want to achieve right there. <clears throat> we can get rid of those divisions. That's great. Vote for president. Oh. Uh, the first session of the 11th National Assembly will be appointed the head of our state. Trok Dulong. Von Von Kai for sake of our reform. Oh, he's directly hired. I like that guy. Truck Duk Long. Elect Nguyen Fu Throng. For sake of our reform. Who are you? Von Tra. He stops being a political advisor. Who is this? Tran Duk Luang. Oh. You know, for the sake of our reforms, we'll be able to for Prime Minister. Oh, crap. Fu Trong? No. Nguyen Min Triat. Nguyen Dan Tong. I'm a radical reform. Well. Vote for the Chairman of the National Assembly. Nguyen Fu Trong. Oh. Alright then. Golden Forest Silver Sea. Well, that's not bad. Social Protection Program. Fight against poverty. There's tons of political power. Wow. And it gets worse consumer goods. Why would we choose this route? Ensure social security. We need wage reform first. Destroys our consumer goods. Completely destroys consumer goods. Wow. Wow. Massive anti crime campaign, which is pretty good. Invest in the north. Invest in the expand Haiphong port. Invest in the south. Two civvies, two civvies, one infrastructure, one infrastructure. Level construction speed. Expand Saigon port. Um, South Mekong Delta. This seems this is just better overall because you get like ten percent more construction speed overall. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Economic development in the southern keep uh, economic regions must be on the basis of exploiting resources and utilizing advantages in geographical location, natural conditions, infrastructure systems of the region to build the region. As most dynamic, oh, look at that, uh, economically developed regions. With high and sustainable economic growth, the key economic regions must maintain their position while playing a decisive role in contributing to the overall economic growth of the country. As the region's forefront in industrialization and modernization, the region must continue contributing in improving the quality, efficiency, and international competition strength, while also leading in the trend of economic integration and becoming the source of motivation for the development process of the Southeast region. 
Today, the trial run of the Viet Hoa Bank announced, a case was announced. During the final inspection in late 96, it was newly discovered that the Viet Hoa had guaranteed customers to open LCs worth of over 100 million USD in an abnormal manner, without collateral only requiring a deposit of 5 to 20 percent of the LC value, exceeding the 10 percent limit of the bank's equity. After the inspection in January 97, the State Bank issued a warning that the Viet Hoa should not continue to open delayed payment LCs for customers exceeding the prescribed amount and must quickly recover debts with unsafe LCs within six months. However, by then, the losses caused by the Tran Thua Thai and his accomplices to the Viet Hoa had reached over a billion, a thousand billion VND, according to estimates, had now risen to 1,500 billion VND or Vietnamese dollars. Among them, the amounts of money involved in the embezzlement by state defendants was determined to be 213 billion VND and 69 million USD, fraudulent misappropriation of state property worth 15 million US dollars and 15 billion VND, fraud against citizens worth 65 billion VND. Vu Ngoc Ngong, general director of Viet Hoa, accused of being an accomplice of Tran Tuan Thai, chairman of the board in this case, had signed guarantees for the long and comprehensive import-export company to open LCs higher than the quotas without, being, without requiring collateral and signed deposits. During the trial, Ngong admitted that despite having the, being the general director, all activities at the Viet Hoa were manipulated by Thai and only signed documents. Moreover, Ngong repeatedly requested Thai to have direct contact with customers, but that was not allowed. In the end, the trial counsel sentenced three life imprisonments and 16 suspended sentences for the defendants. However, the damage of the cause were difficult to qualify. Screw bankers. For real. Aftermath of the trial, and according to the investigation results, the initial credit transactions carried out when the Viet Hoa was newly established and operational showed signs of deceit, but it was not until 96 that the authorities discovered them. Mr. Nguyen Hu Han, deputy director of the State Bank branch in Ho Chi Minh City, admitted if the State Bank had discovered Viet Hoa's misconduct during the first inspection in 94, the damage from the case probably wouldn't be as large as now. The trial counsel recommended that the State Bank pay attention to three issues in organizing the management of stock, joint stock banks. Firstly, rectify the bank inspection work, enhance the capacity and moderate responsibility of inspection officials. Secondly, regularly advise banks to strictly comply with the reg level regulations on banking operations. Thirdly, there should be an appropriate management mechanism to ensure that the operations of joint stock joint stock banks do not deviate and ensure capital for individuals who have invested. Tell me, do you have clowns for the economic ec economic inspector? Fine, get there first before we do anything else. Get some more uh, organization too. Expand the stock on for it. With a history of more than 160 years and having excellent achievements in contributing to the country's economic development, Saigon Port has been awarded the title of Hero of Labor by the President of Vietnam in 1996 for its contributions to the progress of building socialism and the development of southern regions from 86 to 95, serving activities for the large fields including areas of Ho Chi Minh City, along with surrounding areas in the Mekong River Delta with an annual output of more than 10 million tons. Saigon Port plays an important role in asserting Vietnam trade to influence over western line countries and economic sustainability of the South. It's important to further develop the strategic port, to serve the needs of import and export while also maintaining its role within the region and the world. Oh, you didn't have to come up here. Look at that. Good job. Go goes Osama. Containment. But also must work on construction. Improved railway transportation. Building railway transportation in Vietnam has not been developed equivalent with other transport industries in the country and within the region. The situation of the current situ status has shown that the current incorporated technology is still backwards and the deterioration of railways due to lack of maintenance has led to the limitation in needs of passengers and goods transpor transporting through railways. The focus on investment and development of the railway transport industry to meet the needs of transport services will significantly reduce the load for the transport road transportation and other transport sectors. Moreover, Railway transport is considered to be the highest energy-efficient method of transportation compared to other transportation methods. Therefore, increasing the transport rate for the railway industry by improving both the railway's quality and incorporation of new, new technologies will contribute to reducing the yearly energy needs of the country? I don't know, we couldn't read it, that underneath there, so. How are we doing in, uh, up here? Alright, so you guys this. You might not win immediately, but with help of others, we might be able to destroy another division, which is the main reason why we're attacking right now. If you destroy two divisions, well, that would put us over the moon. You're really close. 
I got one. Good. Notre Coon, France. Oh. Well, we can't really call it a republic now if it's uh, been cooed. I guess. I don't know. Hey, 15 and 2. That's not bad. That's good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Independence. Good. Nice. Look at that. Good. And just destroying their militia. Strength and defense industry. The achievements achieved through the development stages of Vietnam's defense industry are extremely important, contributing effectively to the national liberation as wars as well as in the cause of building and protecting the fatherland. Up to now, Vietnam's defense industries basically ensure the needs of the armed forces, specifically in conventional weapons and some high-level technology weapons. However, the requirements and tasks of building and protecting um, the fatherland and the new period requires investment in further development of the defense industry to serve the process of modernizing the armed forces. With the deepening and comforts of international integration of Vietnam, Especially when international integration in the defense industry is identified as an inseparable channel of the international integration process in defense, security, and gradually entering effectiveness, development, and depth. The task of building uh, more weapons is paramount. That's what we're going to say. Golden Forest, Silver Sea. Faster industrialization pays for more resources it yearns for. We feel we should not exploit our own mineral resources to its fullest extent in order to maintain a larger growing industry. Just the old saying is our country is a land of golden forests and silver seas. Nice job, guys. Yay. Did you guys actually win here? Yeah, with some support, yeah. Organizer, infantry leader, mountaineer. Oh, we're definitely learning. Boom. Good job, guys. Well. We don't care for either one of these right-wing nationalists. Revolution betrayed, huh? Just like uh, TNO, in all honesty. Just a lot, a lot of reading. Where do I want to send you? You up here. <laughs> Focus on land resources. Excavation. Rubber. I like the rubber. Tungsten. Uh, rubber with the tungsten steel. What are we lacking here? Actually, nothing. We're actually really good on resources. Eyes on the sea. Oil. Where do we get oil? Synthetic refineries. Or fuel capacity. Sport Military Petroleum Corporation. No. I like focus on land resources. Regardless of what problems in the East Asia's resources can offer, it would be wise for us to continue our focus on exploiting resources within our land sovereignty, given the risk that could draw us into another escalation in the EEZ complex, where the neighboring countries in the region, after all, are going to are reliable enough to feed our growing industrial complexes. Rubber. In the first half of the 21st century, our rubber exports have reached a 16% increase in rubber exports. A new record in our rubber export growth through our local supplies will enable to catch up with high demand of rubber imports due to the rubber price crisis since 1999. It's an opportunity and challenge for us to expand our supply of rubber fast enough to catch up with the growing trends in rubber export and to maintain our position as top 10 countries with the most rubber production. Von Fram. Tungsten, or Von Fram, has become a crucial material to create high technological equipment for both civilian and military purposes. And with the country holding the third largest reserve of tungsten globally, many developing developing countries, you're in to strike a good tungsten trade deal with us. It's so that we must make good of this opportunity, not only develop our industrial base, but also make this material become our advantage in the global mineral trading market. Can you guys do anything here? Yeah, maybe. Good job. Good, I need some better weapons. Uh.
Fallen steel. All industries in the cog require the most kind of nutrients to grow. The question is, what are the most vital aspects for a country's industrial complexes to grow and expand? Simple, coal and steel. Coal acts as a protein that creates energy to keep the industry running. And while steel is an industry calcium that maintains the structure and expands. Who could have seen this instrument coming? Not us. Definitely not us. You know what? We're going to hold here and wait till this is over. And then we'll attack once their last stand is over. There you go. Just whittle down their organization and whatnot. Oh, hello. Oh, you actually made another instrument. Look at that. Very nice. Social protection program nowadays, society is developing and people's living conditions are improving. But besides that, there's still many difficult situations such as orphans, homeless, elderly people, HIV infected children from the poor households, the elderly, <coughs> children with disabilities, etc. Social protection programs are the government's guarantee. A community support of income and essential living conditions in different forms and measures for members of society when they fall into risks, misfortunes, poverty, disadvantages, and life that they themselves are not capable of taking care of themselves and their families at the minimal cost or level. As a humanitarian activity with economic, political, and social and legal significance, contributing to ensuring social protection universally, ensuring that no one is left behind. Oh, we're talking about education here, huh? Fight against poverty and Vietnam hunger, and poverty is still present, a pressing socioeconomic issue. Comprehensive and sustainable poverty reduction are always paid attention by the party and our government, as this is one of the most important tasks that contribute to con our country's development and the path to achieve socialism. Second phase of Program 135, the initial success of the first phase. The second phase of the Program 135 continues to be implemented in almost 2,000 communes and 3,200 villages in second level region with four main tasks. Support, support for production, development, and economic restructuring. Improving production levels of the people, ethnic groups, developing essential infrastructure in communes and villages. Training and fostering grassroots cadres, improving administrative and economic management level. Training and improving. Uh, community capacity, support services, improve and improve and improve people's lives, and legal aid to raise legal awareness. Civilian factory resource up plus plus one, huh? Increase, modify, increase mineral extraction. More construction speed. I like that. Partial mob is nice. Um, could, could, we, could we go free trade? That helps build a little bit faster. We can see what it's like. I heard our steel output, which, which we're making more steel, right? So. I just want to build, 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 build. 41 factories is not enough. So how much are we lacking? Um, none. Fantastic. Job security for workers. Workers reproduce their labor through the means of living or receive from their wages to reproduce labor. Wages must ensure personal consumption of workers and their families. <clears throat> if wages are not based on the value of labor, they're not enough to encourage the improvement of professional qualifications, skills, and qualifications of workers. To ensure this policy, the government plays an important role in ensuring the livelihoods of workers and families. The basic wage in state agencies and the regional minimum wage apply to the business sector as a foundation for wage policy and the wage payments of wage agencies and units. Therefore, wages must ensure the constituent elements to ensure income, which is the main source of livelihood and the basis for creating the living conditions of workers and their families. Execution of Tan Ming Fung. At 5 a.m. this morning, at the shooting range in Tu Duk, the execution team of the Ho Chi Minh City Police carried out the sentence for two death row inmates in the largest economic based case to date. Tang Min Fung, the owner of the Vin Min Fung Group, and Fan Nat Hong, the deputy director of the commercial bank's Ho Chi Minh City branch. The years from 97-98 marked the first economic crisis since the renewal period initiated in the 85-86 in Vietnam. The real estate market faced a crisis in 1998 at a period of excessive overheating. Similar to many other businesses, Min Fung aimed to swiftly seize the opportunity, killing as much land as possible, anticipating a chance to sell at a higher price. From the outset, Min Fung determined to invest on a large scale. The overly heated 
growth prompted Min Fung to invest in various types of real estate for multiple locations. With ample capital, the ability to retain land while still repaying bank loans and waiting for the next growth cycle in the real estate market, Min Fung could potentially reap significant profits. However, and the entire asset block is built on borrowed capital, assuming waiting for the next boom. The profit obtained may struggle to offset the interest of both the principal and the subsidiary loans, perhaps setting a tragedy unfolding from this point onwards. The collapse of the chain left Min Fung incapable of repaying back bank loans. He and his accomplices were sentenced for crimes of fraud, abuse of trust, leading to the misappropriation of state property, and intentional violation causing serious consequences. A significant victory for a country is successfully dismantling a capitalist tycoon with the potential for robust development and economic disruption in the future. Good riddance. Man, we're just trying to fight against poverty. Wage reform. Ever since the beginning of the Doi Moi, we have passed several decrees on our wage reforms in order to parallel economic growth. However, with our current growth pace, the most recent decree, decree number, a lot of numbers and letters, has already shown its limitations and brewing dissatisfaction. If wages are not enough to cover expenses, workers living in standards will decline, forcing them to find additional jobs outside their agencies, units, and businesses, leading to potential risks of embezzlement and corruption. If wages are paid to workers in a satisfactory manner, it will motivate workers to work with a peace of mind, work with dedication, and be responsible for their work. Thus, many proposal plans for the reforms in minimum wage have already been drafted with proposal resolution number something else, and the next one too, being the most promising out of all to tackle the former limitations. So, do we have any decisions here yet? Oh, we do. So, why do you destroy the political power that we get so we can't use it? And you continue to destroy political power. And even more so. And more so. Wow, that is a... Something. Maybe I should not have selected this one. Because we only get 0 0.41 now. Well, it's too late now. That's, that's really dumb. Well, let's see what this one does. Well, we better win more foreign engagements then. Woo! I don't even want to choose it because, I mean... Oh, we can't do anything here. In Vietnam, the persistent challenges of hunger and poverty continue to be significant socioeconomic issues. The party and state have considered consistently prioritized comprehensive and sustainable efforts to eradicate hunger and alleviate poverty. This objective is recognized as a key priority in the country's socioeconomic development and plays a vital role in advancing the nation towards its social goals. 30, almost 34%, or percentage of population living below the national poverty line, while the change goes down, goes 16%. Fighting poverty. Okay, get more political power, consumer goods, and stability. Three years have passed since completion of the fight against poverty. Oh crap. Develop essential infrastructure in rural areas. Support production development and economic restructuring. Monthly change for 100 days. Local staff training. Improve and expand public services. Ho social housing project. 50 days. Job security and income for employees. 180 days. Open vocational training center. Interesting. Well, we're kind of screwed now. Now that we can't do any of this stuff, so. Uh, sure, social security. In a country, social insurance, health insurance, and unemployment insurance are major social policies of the party and state stipulated in the Constitution. And the party documents are constantly supplemented and improved to gradually expand and improve material security, contributing to stabilizing the lives of workers and their families in case of illness, maternity, work accidents, occupational disease, reaching retirement age, risk, death, uh, or other difficulties. Nowadays, with the development of our socialist oriented market economy, these insurgencies or insurances are becoming more and more important, contributing to ensuring social security and sustainable social development. So, we're kind of screwed right now, but we'll see what happens in the next episode, since hopefully we get more political power in some ways and more people end up killing each other, which is pretty normal in the world. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in the next episode. Oh, wow, look, Julie Lieberman. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.